In this video, we're going to go over a very powerful MCP server called Sequential Thinking. And I can't emphasize enough how powerful this MCP server is. It was pointed out to me by Thomas Jefferson on YouTube. And Thomas claims that pairing the Sequential Thinking MCP server with a web search tool like Brave Search makes Claude even more powerful than Perplexity. So I had to try it out. And I'm going to show you everything right now. I will say that it is true. It is so cool. It essentially gives Claude chain of thought, but not, but more than chain of thought, an enhanced chain of thought. And the way this works is it, it takes chain of thought principles and then adds all these extra features. It adds structured metadata so it could plan, it can reason, it could readjust its plan. So it pretty much says how many thoughts it thinks it needs. And then it makes a plan and it starts acting on the plan. And it goes back to the sequential thinking, says what number of thought it is. It can say, do I need more thoughts or less thoughts? And then it uses every other tool at its disposal to get the best possible solution. So first I'm going to show you how to set this up. Then I'm going to show you an actual use case. I'm going to compare it to perplexity in ChatGPT with search. Now, first, before we get into it, I made a few other videos on MCP servers. The first video explains setting up MCP servers on Mac and the file system MCP server. The next video talks about setting up Brave Search and Puppeteer, which we'll use in this video as well. The third video I did on MCP servers talks about community-based servers. So the sequential thinking server is a reference server. So let's just look at all the servers really quickly. Okay, so here's the main MCP server GitHub. As you see here, they did a bit of a rearrange since the last time we came. We've already set up Brave. We've already set up the file system. We've already set up Puppeteer. In this video, we're going to set up sequential thinking. And this is what we're talking about. Just really briefly, I want to show you that there are now third party servers that are official integrations that are here. And these are maintained by these companies, TinyBird, Search1 API, Raygun, Cloudflare. So it's really cool. Companies are adding MCP servers as we go. And there's also community servers. We touched on this briefly. In my last video, I set up the MCP installer server. And you see multiple people are trying to create the same MCP servers, maybe with different implementations. So here you see two different MySQL servers, two different Twitter servers by different people, two different Notion servers. There's a lot of cool things here. Now, I will say when you come to the community servers, do that at your own risk. No one's really checking these out, so you have to check it out by yourself. I found that most of them work great, but they don't always work as expected. So be careful what you give it access to and, and just verify that it works before you let it take control of your whole computer. So we're going to go into the sequential thinking MCP server and pretty much here are the features it says it's able to break down complex problems into manageable steps. It's able to revise, refine thoughts as understanding deepens, branch into alternative paths of reasoning, adjust the total number of thoughts dynamically and generate and verify solution hypothesis or hypotheses. I don't know. Okay, so let's just take this. Let's just put this into our config.json file. And again, we did this in the first video. If you haven't done that yet, check it out above. The reason we're starting here is because we already have a bunch of MCP servers, we only need to start from here. Let's just copy and paste this in. So I'm gonna open up VS Code. Okay, so I pasted mine in here right after my Puppeteer MCP server and above my memory MCP server. So as you see here, I added a comma after Puppeteer. I added this in and added a comma after this bracket. So we're just adding another server between these two servers. You don't have to have memory installed, but I really like the memory MCP server as well. So once you do that, you save your file, you can even quit VS Code. Let's open up Claude. Now we're in Claude. Now you see I have 31 MCP tools. Really briefly, we have the memory MCP server, we have Brave Search. We have the file system, we have the YouTube one, we have the MCP installer, you see Puppeteer down here, we'll also see the sequential thinking tool. Okay, really cool. So we see all the tools here. Now I'm going to take this one step further. I'm going to tell you what I did. I already created a custom Claude project that pretty much tells Claude, I want you to use all these tools to help me research a certain subject or whatever I want to do. I'm going to show you the custom instructions really quickly. So here are my custom instructions. Tell it to automatically activate, use all available tools. Every new conversation should automatically begin with sequential thinking to determine which other tools are needed for the task at hand. Mandatory tool usage. I tell it its core workflow. You start by sequential thinking. Then you do a primary search with Brave Search. Then you do deep ver verification with Puppeteer. Then you do data processing if necessary. You synthesize and present that information. Give it specific guidelines for the tools, for Brave Search, for Puppeteer, for sequential thinking, for everything. And then I give it some implementation notes. So basically every time I give a query to this Claude project, it's going to go through the 
custom instructions and use every tool as I tell it to. And the basis of this is sequential thinking. So it will break down the question similar to the way perplexity does it, but it will do it even better. And I'll show you now. So we're going to use the ultra cloud search tool and we're going to put in this prompt. We are a group of 10 people aged 5 to 75 staying in Teaneck, New Jersey for the next two weeks. None of us are from around here. It's raining and snowing and cold. Can you help me think of activity ideas we can do so we're not stuck in the hotel? But before I do this, I'm actually going to give the same prompt to ChatGPT with search in Perplexity Pro. And we're going to compare all three to figure out what gives us the best answer. First, we'll give it to ChatGPT with search. We'll turn on search. We'll give the same prompt. And by the way, I've done a few other AI search comparison videos where I compared ChatGPT with Search, Google Gemini Search, Perplexity Pro, and even Mr. All Search. So now we're just going to do the same thing with one prompt with ChatGPT, Perplexity Pro, and Claude with all of its tools. I was actually expecting better from ChatGPT. I was expecting pictures and links, but okay. It gives me two museums, indoor entertainment, bowling alleys, in indoor trampoline parks, theaters and performing arts, local cinemas, indoor sports, recreation. This is nice. I would have hoped for a little bit more. Let's try Perplexity really quickly. Same prompt with Perplexity Pro. As you see here, Perplexity is actually breaking our question down into multiple questions. It's kind of a chain of thought process. Okay, TNX Speedway, American Dream Mall, Liberty Science Center. Okay, this, these answers are pretty good. Now let's just try Claude with all our tools. So ready, let's go. Now with MCP servers, we're gonna be asked to give it permission as, you, as I'm sure you know. So we'll allow sequential thinking first. And this is really cool. I wanna show it to you, but I think it's gonna go away, okay? So I'm going to allow it to do everything. And we're going to look at its thinking really quickly. So you see it's doing all these different things. Let's go back to the original sequential thinking. Let's try to expand it a bit. First thought. First, I should search for indoor activities and venues near your neck that would be suitable for multi-generational groups spanning ages 5 to 75. Thought number one. Total thoughts five. Next thought needed. True. Close this. Then there's a brave search. We see it's looking for indoor family activities. Okay, then it goes back to sequential thinking. So then it is sequential thinking a few more times. Okay, so not as pretty, but let's see. Based on my analysis, here are several indoor activities your group can enjoy. The American Dream Mall, 15 minutes away. Nickelodeon Universe Indoor Theme Park, great for the kids. DreamWorks Water Park, great for the kids. Big Snow, great for the kids. Maybe I'll do that too. Indoor ice skating, someone else can do that. Legoland, great for younger children. What about larger children? Okay, luxury shopping. Liberty Science Center, I know they'll love that. 30 minutes away, I like how it's telling me the distance as well. It's giving me bullet points why it'd be good. Particularly good for school age children and curious adults. Local teenage options, Bowler City, Bowling Alley, Cinemas, Indoor Recreation Centers, Dave & Busters. Okay, so this is really cool. I found the answer from Claude to be just as good, if not a little bit better than what I got from Perplexity and ChatGBT. What I'm missing here are links, URLs to click on them. I actually put that in my custom instruction, so I'm gonna try and figure that out. But anyways, I just wanted to give you one use case, one example of using sequential thinking with web search. And you can make so many powerful integrations with this. Some other things I've done with the sequential thinking already is connected it with Brave Search and Puppeteer and helped me figure out how to make better prompting for Sora. I've added it to my PRD creator and then also helped me do some coding with it. I think it's really powerful. I think it's really cool. And you can add it to so many different things. I think this is one of the coolest MCP servers I've seen till now, especially because it's modular. It can be added to different MCP servers. So let me know what you think. I hope this video was insightful or helpful for you. If you have any other ideas of MCP servers I should try out, or any other use cases you think I should do, let me know. Thank you and have a great day.